here we are in Auberge Saint Gabriel, beautiful little spot. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the Mies behind you. It's your team. <laughs> Very elegant, indeed. Yes. You are international ambassador for Belvedere. Some, many would argue, one of the best vodka brands in the world. I think so. You know, I, I agree. I hope so. I think you obviously have very smart viewers. We're going to get right back to the basics. Okay. Because our viewers are used to beer. Yeah. We want to know more about vodka. Okay. Now, first it's a great all, accompaniment to beer. I'll tell you that. Is yeah. that right? Oh, yeah. If you've got a rye beer, I know you guys specialize in micro brews. We do. A nice rye beer, nice and peppery. Yeah. A really nice texture. So it's called a boiler maker. So if you do a, a beer in a shot, essentially. But our base, our raw material is rye. We use a very specific strain of rye. It's called Dankowski Gold Rye. And it is a high grade, well, it's, it's a distilling rye, basically. Yeah. Um, it's got 65% starch content in it. Most normal rye has only about 50% starch content. Yeah, so it's particularly starchy. What is starch, everyone? Starch is that? sugar. Yeah, right? sugar, yeah. Yeah, and what is alcohol, everyone? It's uh, sugar, sugar as well. <laughs> See what we did there? Yeah. What it also means is that there's an inherent sweetness that transfers through into the spirit because of starts in the brain. Yeah. So again, a rye beer is going to be a great accompaniment to Belvedere. So a nice chilled shot of Belvedere, sipping it alongside a really nice ice cold beer. Yeah. Rye beer, rye beer, right? Speaking of temperature, okay. at what temperature should it be stored and served vodka? A lot vodka. of people say, have, they've been telling me, you know, you keep it in the freezer, it, right. it brings out the flavor, and I'm thinking... Right, you're thinking it's wrong. That's, and that's a contradiction, I, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so. The colder the spirit, the less you're going to actually be able to taste. <laughs> we got a speedy Gonzalez. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just someone speeding through the shot. Um, the colder the vodka, um, the less you're actually going to be able to taste, right? You're not going to actually be able to taste the flavor. Because basically what you're doing is you're stifling the flavor, right? Mm -hmm. um, we appreciate that most people aren't going to drink room temperature vodka. Um, we don't recommend that you drink room temperature vodka. For tastings, room temperature is the best way. And it... It goes by like a cloud. I mean, exactly. It's Soft, fantastic. subtle, vanilla, cream. Um, yes. But when you're actually enjoying it at home, at a bar with your friends, um, the best way to enjoy it is chilled, yeah. not frozen. So if you want to keep it in the fridge, that's great, um, but never in the freezer. Good advice. Yeah. As of 2013, January this year, a new appellation has been passed huh. in Poland stating that in order for your vodka to say Poland on the bottle, to say that it's a Polish vodka, you may not add any glycerin, sugars, all of that, and all parts of the process must take place on Polish soil. Your vodka is from Poland. Yes. Where, quite possibly, vodka yeah. was Born. Uh, flor first flourished. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And we have proof of this how. Right, so um, there's a big debate, is vodka Russian, is it Polish, um, do we really know? Uh, it's been around since the 14th or 15th century. It's very, very hard to say exactly which country first started distilling it. Um, what we do know, is that the first people to write it down and call it vodka were the Polish people. Well, historically speaking, you've yeah, just put a flag down exactly. into the moon. The first time you see the word vodka written is in a Polish court document in 1405. Now, there's a school of thought out there, yep. Ali, that claims that a good vodka doesn't taste like anything. It's purely oh. insipid and, and, and <laughs> I mean, it's basically strong water, what we have. What would you argue against that? Would you demystify this? I would be happy to demystify this. Please this do. is a good one. Um, there is, that's a big misconception. Um, vodka doesn't really have a proper definition, especially not in North America. The definition of vodka basically states that it's an odorless, colorless, tasteless, neutral spirit. Right. Um, that's not a definition, that's an anti definition, right? Um, so, 70 odd years on, we are, we particularly at Belvedere, are working against this to create something new, right? This word that comes back, purity. Purity, right? So, which is similar, I mean, it's a synonym to neutrality. neutrality. Yes. So whenever you hear a vodka brand talk, talk about, oh, we're very pure, or it's all about the purity, you should be very weary. Um, purity is a fancy marketing word for neutrality, right? Um, we never talk about purity with Belvedere. What we always talk about is character, right? So Belvedere is a characterful vodka, is, full of flavor. Yes. Um, we're trying to retain as much the characteristic of the rye as possible, an eau de rye, if you will. <laughs> well, well put. My best attempt at some French. Another question for you. Yeah. 
That's a little tricky. Okay. Are all cocktails created equal? Are all cocktails created equal? I'm mean, certainly not. <laughs> um, no, no, certainly not. I would never recommend a blue cocktail be involved in Belvedere, but <laughs> this is like, you know, made naturally with lavender. So the egg whites are purely there for texture. It's not okay, a flavor yeah. thing at all. It's all about texture. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about context. It's all about occasion. Um, you know, we don't drink because we have to. We drink because we enjoy it and we want to. So you want to express it over the top, top of the glass, right? It's kind of just getting the, the, the flavor, but you're not getting any of the juice. And we've got this trend that is, uh, you mentioned, going back towards the classics, going yep. the, the simple drinks. Yep. Um, so for us, it's all about simplexity. Yeah, um, simplexity. Simplexity. So sim complex things done simply, mm -hmm. not the other way around. Drinks are all, you know, stirred drinks, really boozy, um, maybe a bit more akin to something that existed during Prohibition, right? Yeah. That's my answer. <laughs> fresh lime juice, so fresh squeeze. Um, we're going to do three quarter ounce. Three quarter ounce of simple syrup, um, fresh rosemary. You just kind of, it. yeah, you just kind of slap it around. <laughs> yeah, you just, Bad you, rosemary. you just want to release some of the oils, essentially. Let me make sure. It was over my shoulder, so that way it's gonna, it's gonna go out. It's gonna go over that way. Yeah, it's a really nice hard shake. I'm sure, this looks really attractive on camera. As nice as rosemary is. You probably don't want the little fronds of rosemary getting in your teeth, right? A little dusting around the top. It's just very gently on the top, yeah? <laughs> I can't help myself. What do you think of um, um, whipped cream flavored vodka? Oh, I can't be on camera talking about that stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much, You're Allie. Very it's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All right, cool. Alright, I hope you don't mind my subtle branding. Is that alright? Huh. What'd you see what, look at that? See what I did there?